Hello, James. How are you? How are you? Good, good. Thank you. you nice to see you. Have you have you guys started the harvest yet? How's it going? No, not yet. Not yet. It's going well, uh, but the maturity is very different from one parcel to another. Mm -hmm. And between also Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier, there's a lot of differences. And some gray rot uh, is appearing due to the rain and the bad weather we have. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful about it uh, for the harvest. And we will see. But our, I saw our director of the vineyard and he told me that our vines are quite uh, okay and well, uh, uh, yes, they are, they are in well shape. Okay, good. Well, anyways, so, it sounds it sounds like a uh, sort of a more traditional uh, vintage, like the old days. Listen, I already tasted uh, the new Grand Siècle number twenty three, so mm -hmm. uh, and really impressive. Particularly the uh, aromas were were like amazing. Like honestly, I can't think of a more beautiful um, champagne with the aromas with that sort of brioche and you know, tart to uh, limon, and it was like really nuts, like just incredible wine. You know, tell me about number 23 and all the background in it, because I'm, I'm really fascinated to learn more about it. Okay, so I will uh, start with maybe the, the story behind the creation of Grand Siècle, which is mm -hmm. the, the, the origin of it. Of the idea. So um, when my grandfather uh, came back from the war, he took over Laurent Berrier's that his mother bought for him. So in 1939, uh, and when he became director, he soon realized that if he wanted Laurent Berrier to be one of the main uh, famous champagne brand, uh, he needed to have a prestige cuvee. And at that time, and it's still the case today, uh, the prestige cuvee uh, market is based on a vintage and not on a yeah. blend. So he, he thought that if uh, he wanted to do a, another prestige cuvee with a vintage, it would be like any other one and not any different. So that's why he came back to the observation of the nature. And he realized that the climate in Champagne is very irregular. The quality is not the same from one vintage to another. So he asked himself, what is the true uh, qu secret uh, quality behind a beautiful champagne. And the answer for him was the assemblage, the blend. Mm -hmm. So that's why he decided to create a, a prestige cuvee based on a blend instead of a vintage, because with the blend, it could go very much further in terms of quality to reach the goals that he had in mind. And the, the, the goal that he had in mind was to recreate this perfect year that the nature cannot provide. And what is for us the perfect year? For us, it is a, a great champagne, which has developed a very, a very deep complexity and intensity in terms of aromas, but at the same time is able to maintain freshness and acidity through time. And so that's what we wanted to show through Grand Siècle. And uh, I'm happy that you tasted it already to yeah. understand what we are saying, because the goal is to, to show this perfect year expressed by these aromas, very intense, very complex due to the long aging we have uh, in our um, cellar. But at the same time, it has a, a very good tension. It's very acidic, very fresh, and it, it's, it gives a lot of youth in your palate when you taste it. So, um, but explain how the numbered cuvées are different than your normal Grand Siècle. Exactly. So be, before, at the origin, my grandfather wanted to say, when you buy a bottle of Grand Siècle, you know it's Grand Siècle and you will like it because it's all the time the same style. But uh, two years ago, uh, no, no, uh, three years ago, mm -hmm. we have developed this iteration concept to explain those different blends that we have made through time. We have only made 24 iterations since the first one launched in 1959, the first Grand Siècle. Uh, so okay. this one is the 23rd and it's in Magnum because you always have a difference between the launch of a bottle and a Magnum. Yeah. Because the Magnum will take more time to reach the maturity 
than the bottle. So we always have a difference of three to four to five years of difference of aging between the bottle and the magnum. That's why you will never have the same iteration in bottle and in magnum in the market at the same time. Okay. And we are the only one to do that. We respect the format of the wine and express its quality when it's time to launch it. And, and are you launching, are you, when is it launching this? When will it be in the market? The 23rd will be appearing in the market normally by, uh, it depends, but in Europe, it will be by mid-October. Uh, okay. And I believe that in Hong Kong, it's going to arrive by uh, certainly uh, early 2023. Sorry, okay. 22, 22. And just, just to, mean, to, to continue on what we were saying regarding the perfect year, I think it's extremely important what you mentioned regarding the aromatic, because usually, uh, and this is something that uh, uh, Lucy has been very well explaining, is the price to pay for having a, a very nice aromatic is usually tension and acidity and freshness into the wine, because the more the wine will age, the more aromatic uh, we will be, uh, it will be, get developed uh, in, in, in the wine. But here, what we, what we, what we see and this is definitely our goal when we make uh, Grand Cirque, is to, to keep developing this aromatic through a very long aging time on lease, because this wine has been aging for 15 years uh, in, in the cellars, uh, but also maintaining, and this is very much our style as well at Laurent Perrier, maintaining this extraordinary freshness and, and acidity, uh, which also guarantee a great aging potential behind. Uh, it's definitely a wine totally. that, we, that, that is enjoyable right now, because it's already very expressive, uh, fresh and, and, and nice, but you can see that there is a lot of uh, aging potential behind. It's definitely a wine that you can be keeping for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Exactly. No, no problem. Mm -hmm. That's what I that's what I finished and I said one for the seller. It's really yeah, it's so true. structured, yeah. incredible. Yeah. It's one of the best ones I've had from you guys. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. So, so tell me, what's the, uh, as far as vintages, can you say what the base of this uh, year is? Yes. So you have three vintages always for mm -hmm. Grand Sieg. It's 2006, 2004, and 2002. Uh, 2006, okay. you have 65%. <clears throat> 2004, you have 20%. In 2002, you have 15%. You always have a majority of Chardonnay completed by Pinot Noir with 58% of Chardonnay and 42% of Pinot Noir. And they are sourced from 11 out of the 17 Grand Cru in Champagne. And then uh, was it aged in Magnum? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we always I didn't, th aged the I didn't think about, yeah, because some people could do it in a normal bottle. And then, <laughs> then, no, just, no, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, okay. No, no, we age it in the, in the, the original format. format. Yeah, exactly. Original yeah. Format. We do not uh, transverse uh, it. And so what, how, how do you guys think it compares to uh, past releases? Like what, what really sticks in your mind uh, about this wine? Uh, what is what is extremely important, uh, interesting to to notice for this wine is that the twenty three, the twenty third iterations has always been has already pardon, re been released uh, uh, several years ago in bottle format, uh, as Lucy mentioned. Ah. Uh, now it's the second life, I would say, the second life of of, of this iteration that is now uh, revealed in Magnum. But the twenty three ah. has, has been already released with a, with a fewer aging time only, uh, with a l l lesser aging time only. Um, so we have a wine, if you compare just these two iterations, which is, of course, more complex, more developed, with a little bit more structure, uh, but without compromising uh, its, its youth, its great aging potential behind. And, and uh, we could compare it with the 24th iteration, which is now on the market, mm -hmm. but it's on a bottle mm -hmm. format. It will be released in Magnum in the, the next coming years, but not, not now, since we are now releasing the 23. Uh, but I would say that there is a always a difference between the Magnum and the bottle, because the Magnum, of course, has yeah, been totally. spent more time on lease, so it's developing more complexity, more texture as well, mm -hmm. uh, but without compromising its extraordinary freshness and, and acidity. So, so how do you differentiate? So it's already been, um, what do you call it? How, how can you, of course it's in Magnum, but how does the consumer know that this is, if you will, it's, it's not really a re-release, but it's it's the same wine as number twenty three before, but now in this large 
format. Exactly. Well, mm-hmm. What do you call it? So the normal Grand Siec has the number, but, um, and of course you do magnums when you release it at the beginning, but what do you call this then? Uh, I would say we don't give a specific name for, for, for this wine, but it's a signature of Grand Siec because we do it for all the magnums. Anytime you, you have a Grand Siec magnum, you know that the wine has been aged for a longer time than, than the bottle. Oh, okay. Okay. So you don't do, when you release the, the Grand yeah. Siec Normal, you yeah. don't, you don't put, you don't have it in magnums. No, exactly. Exactly. Because it will age more time in our cellar wow, before exactly. being released. The only name we could give, and you probably, I think we, we've been tasting it together because it was yeah. part of the stock class we've been doing together, yeah. is Les Reserves. And Les Reserves is a much further, uh, um, it's a much later, yeah. it's a longer, even longer really, um, mm-hmm. aging on, on Lise, yeah. uh, and a much later release. Uh, because the wine is going to be kept only in Magnum, uh, also in Jérôme, mm-hmm. uh, for 20 years in the cellars. And then we are going to give it a specific name because it's oh, okay. another expression, which is a very funny thing because Grand Siècle... It's like, P, look, it's like P2 and P3 in a way, right? It's, it's in, in, a way, way. in a way. Yeah. In a way. But, but, uh, but Just only, only in the concept of, of, del- of um, releasing them at different times. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Wow. Well, really fantastic. And what what will be when will you release twenty four then in Magnum? So um, maybe in three to four in, more right, years. Right. Mm. Probably two. I guess two, two, uh, two to three. We, we don't know three, yet. Yeah. It, will, it will depend. But it's uh, of course uh, we have a very limited number of bottles available. Uh, what is for sure is that we never release uh, an iteration in Magnum compared to the bottle. As soon as we know that it is not ready, mm-hmm. uh, we, we want to make sure that the wine is at the same evolution state than the bottle before releasing it. There is a reason behind. So, listen, guys, thanks so much for the tasting. It was really exceptional. And I just can't get over how the aromas on this. Um, I actually let some of our other tasters taste it, and they were all, wow, this is really incredible. So, um, I look forward to seeing it when it's on the market again. And, um, you know, uh, look forward to tasting the next edition. Super, okay, perfect. Super, great. Okay. Okay, thanks again. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.